Bridge and welcome back to Wales. It's lovely to have you here. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we're having another rain day, I'm sorry. Not much I can do about it. Um, I've been trying to get outside in the garden, but it's been far too wet. Um, we've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain. And uh, last week, the pathway from the chickens down to the house was like a river. It was just running past me as I was going up the garden to the chickens. So I haven't been able to get in the garden and do any videos for you. Um, so I'm sorry about that. So today we are having a rain day. So we're doing some rain day jobs. I've got some stuff to prepare for the freezer. I've got to light the stove over here. I've got a batter brith recipe for you, which I've made on the cook stove. I did that last week and that was going to be in Sunday's vlog for you. It was a really, really nice tea bread. I made it with uh, rayabos and vanilla tea and it's a herbal tea. And it gave a lovely, intense, pungent flavour because it has bergamot in it, a bit like Earl Grey. So you could use Earl Grey or Lady Grey tea in it, but I used uh, Rayobos tea with vanilla. So that was really nice. And um, There was no fat in it. It was a fat-free cake. I did put egg in it and it was a vegan cake, but uh, I decided to put an egg in it because I like eggs in my cakes. I like cakes with eggs. I just think it adds a nice... Uh, texture to a cake and if you leave the egg out I don't think the texture is the same so and this pretty stove my pretty uh, stove that I have here is a really really good cake making oven so if you're looking for a new wood burning stove with an oven and a hob top the pretty 2p41 is fantastic for making cakes I've yet to make, make bread in it that may be something that's coming this weekend I want to try making some bread um, because I'm wanting some soup and bread each day at the moment, so yeah, that's going to be nice. Um, and it is out of this book. I've got a couple of book recommendations today. This is one of them, Occasional Vegan. Now, I got this for a penny on Amazon. The uh, retail price is £12.99. I don't know if you'll get it for a penny, but uh, it was by Sarah Philpott. And it's called The Occasional Vegan. Now, there's some lovely recipes in here. This was the one that I did. I did the batter brith. Um, so, yeah, it's got coal in it made out of tofu, which won't be a uh, thing for my dad. It's got Thai green curry with broad beans in it. It's got lasagna. It's got soup. It's got different cakes. Um, it's got cranberry roast in this. Christmassy chestnut cranberry roast. So I think I'll make that for Christmas dinner this year. And again, I can make that in my cook stove. It's got a lot of lovely recipes in it. It's got ratatouille in it, which looks nice. It's got roast cauliflower with all the trimmings. So you could have that instead of your turkey. Um, it's got Saturday night spaghetti bolognese. It's got uh, jumping jack flash burgers made with jackfruit. Um, chocolate mousse, which I have got a chocolate mousse recipe to come for you. Um, chickpea curry yeah so there's a lot in there there's an awful lot in there and they're so simple to make it's a really easy cookbook I struggle with cookbooks because of all the ingredients but this one does have the things that you can get really easily in the shops and uh, yeah it's really nice tasty food so the occasional vegan by Sarah Philpott highly recommend that book as I say it's 12 99 brand new I got this second hand for a pa for a penny on uh, Amazon altogether it came to £2.50 with the postage so I was really pleased with that the other one I got is called the garden forager now I love this book I saw it in a, sh in a shop and I thought, you know, I'm going to try and get it cheaper. And I managed to find it on eBay for £7. It was brand new. It was a bit more than I wanted to spend. But, you know, it tells you all the foods that you can um, use out of the garden. Now, I didn't know you could eat begonias. don't know whether any of you did. But you can actually eat begonias. I said, um, let's have a look. The stems and leaves and petals of the begonia can be eaten. You can nibble on the petals as an addition to a salad. Or if you really wanted to, you could even make cheese using the sap of the tuberous begonia to curdle the milk. So there you go. Instead of using animal rennet to curdle cheese, you could use a begonia plant out your garden. I love that idea. Begonia vinaigrette. Begonia and strawberry crumble. Now that sounds nice, doesn't it? There was one in here that I bought it for. One was the Douglas Fair. 
because we have a forest full of Douglas fir trees. I have four in my garden. Um, and I just really like the idea that you can use it for medicinal purposes, but you can also make tea out of the pine needles. Now, I didn't know that. And I've had all my branches raised up, so I actually don't think I mind the Douglas fir tree anymore. <laughs> but yeah, you could make a uh, fir tip syrup, fir tip shortbread. Now that sounds nice. A fir tree, gosh, that's a mouthful, isn't it? A fir tip trip. <laughs> a fir tip tipple. <laughs> dear me I'm gonna leave that in as well you know yeah it says a fair tip tipple <laughs> pound two tablespoons of Proust Pats <laughs> pound two tablespoons of spruce or pine needle in a mortar to release their wonderful scent then add them to a bottle of gin Ooh, that sounds nice or vodka along with one tablespoon of white sugar leave to infuse overnight then strain the spirit and discard the ground pine needles, decant the vodka or gin back into its bottle. Uh, it will leave it will have turned a lovely pale pistachio colour, tastes great, served on its own, or with ice and added tonic or soda water. So if you have Douglas fir trees, you can use the pine needles to make a nice Christmas tipple. <laughs> I love that idea, I do. Did you know you could use fiddlehead ferns as well? I didn't, I have lots in my garden. You can eat the leaves, apparently, lightly steamed, sautéed with lemon juice, served with a Bernese sauce. So fiddlehead ferns, if you don't know them, it's those ones that unfurl like that. So that's tasty. Fiddlehead pickle. Um, there was one in here for using uh, that Himalayan honeysuckle, it's called, I think, in my garden. See if I can find it. Sumac, you can use the staghorn plants as well. So it's a great book. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, sea holly. Well, I didn't know you could use oryngium. Use the roots, the leaves, the roots and the leaves. Oh, and the flower. Hops. Oh, it's in alphabetical order. There we go. Himalayan honeysuckle. Now I've got shed loads of that in my garden. It grows wild. It's a lovely plant. I've shown it to you on the video before. And it produces these long tendrils, these ones, and they open up as a beautiful little flower and then they turn to berries. And it's the berries that you can eat apparently. Fruit is surrounded by purple, red, pink uh, petals and remains after fruit fall. So it remains on the plant a long time and it's the fruit that you want. And the thing I liked the sound of was frozen yogurt with Him Himalayan honeysuckle uh, ripple like a raspberry ripple. I thought that sounded really, really nice. So I might have a go at making that on my channel at some point. There's also Himalayan honeysuckle berry and apple cake with a caramel topping. Now they sound lovely, don't they? So I bought it really just for those two recipes because I really wanted to use it because the Himalayan honeysuckle is a beautiful plant. Um, there's hibiscus chutney and syrup if you've got hibiscus. It just gives you a good idea Oh, geranium and pelargoniums, you can eat them as well. Geranium sugar, geranium cake, geranium tea, syrup, poached peaches and geranium wine syrup. Ooh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? So, yeah, if you can get hold of it, it's a really, really good book. The Garden Forager, um, it was £7 on Amazon. Retail price is £12.99. It's by Adele Nozadar. Um, and yeah it's a really good book so I'll put the details in the description bar below for you so they're my book recommendations for today so we're going to go in the kitchen um, and we're going to put all the stuff in the freezer and then we're going to come back light the cook stove and I'll see you at the end so see you in a minute so we're back in the kitchen and um, I'm sorting out stuff for the freezer we have some bread that needs to go in I have some soup that needs to go in and uh, I've got, I've already done some plums. I've done six punnets of plums. I've got two bags of them to go in. And and I've got some bag of brith to go in. So yeah, I thought that I'd get that done. So that's one of my tasks today is sorting things out for the freezer for uh, food storage. So that'll keep us going for a while. 
I've got a bit of this broccoli and Stilson soup to go in. There's not much of that left. There's probably about one or two portions. And I've got this winter veg soup to go in as well. Because it's not going to get eaten. So it may as well go in the freezer and be stored up. This is my bar of riff. I made this the, on the log stove. And I recorded the video of me making it. So I've got three bags of that. It fits three pieces in each bag, which is plenty. That's uh, six portions in each bag so I've got that this one I've got an extra portion in so that's seven portions in that bag and then seven portions in the next one so that's seven fourteen and six is what twenty portions altogether so that's good isn't it that's twenty cups of tea um, I made it all from scratch myself so that um, and these are my two bags of plums so yeah, that's go all going in the freezer. Um, and I just thought I'd show you bagging it up. And then we'll pop it in the freezer together and just show you how I do it. So in my bags here, this is my bag of bread. And I've got seven portions in this one. And six portions in this one. So that's 20 portions of cake I'm going to get all together. Because I've got another seven portions here. So what I'm going to do is, I've got some grease proof paper. To all you old dears out there, I'm probably telling you, teaching you how to suck eggs. You just have to bear with me because there, there may be some young people coming across that don't know how to freeze fruit cake, and they might want to know uh, how to preserve it for their family. So just bear with me if you do know how to do this. But I'm using grease proof paper. So we'll put a piece there. Another piece in there, fold it back again, another piece there, and then fold that over the top. And then all that means then is that when you go to get it out of the freezer, it's a lot easier to separate the pieces instead of taking a big lump. You could just go out, get yourself a piece of cake, defrost it in the microwave. I can defrost it on the stove, um, and then you've got a nice warm piece of fruit cake that you can use for tea. So it just saves having to go and get a whole mound out. If you just want one piece of cake, you just say, I just fancy a piece of fruit cake. Then you can just go out, get yourself a piece of fruit cake, and it's a lot easier to separate. So that's the, the only reason that I'm doing it. And then that little piece goes there. So that's now ready for the freezer. Um, I've got a big chest freezer. I've got a 400 litre freezer, so I've got the space. It was one of the things that I decided that we needed when I first moved into this house and that was um, a decent freezer and I decided to get a 400 litre freezer because I thought that that would be suitable for us so it's a big massive chest freezer I can fit a lot in it it means if we get stuck here if a tree falls down or if we're stuck because of snow or bad weather or if the road floods at the bottom because down by the main road there's a dip like this and there's a little stream that runs alongside it and when that overflows it all floods into the dip and the dip fills with water and it makes it difficult to get out onto the main road. So it just means that if, because the road going down from here is just full of trees and it just means that if we are stuck here we've got plenty of food in the freezer um, and I don't have to worry about going out. And now I've got the wood burning stove as well, it means that if we do have a power cut, which we do have quite regularly in the winter, um, I think we had three last winter and the first winter we were here we had about four. So yeah, we even had one in the summer this year because of the bad weather. I think the transformer got struck by lightning. So uh, yeah, so we do need to have a big freezer. So I would recommend that if you're doing food storage like I want to, uh, get the biggest freezer you can. Get the biggest one you can afford. Don't stretch your budget and put yourself in debt, but get the biggest one you can afford and uh, you can check the power out, power wattage and then convert that into how much it's going to cost you a week to run. Mine cost me about four or five pound a week I think, oh a month sorry, to run my freezer. So that's roughly about a pound a week so it's not too bad. Um, now if the cost has gone up it's probably about one fifty, two pound a week to run it but I think it's more than worth it because it means I've always got food um, and if we get stuck we don't have to panic about how we're going to eat because the food's in the house. 
So I will do a food storage video at some point uh, because I do have a friend who's interested in my food storage. So I thought if I put a, f a video together, she can watch it and um, also you guys can watch it as well and maybe get some tips off me. So that's what I'm going to carry on doing. I've got a loaf of bread. This bread that we got from the co-op. Um, it's a white farmhouse loaf. Excuse the rustling a bit. It's a crusty white farmhouse loaf. There you go. Um, and I'm just going to slice it up. And again, I'm just going to pop it in my bags like this in portions and pop it in the freezer. And then if we fancy some crusty bread, I can pop it in the oven, crisp it up a little bit and then we can have that served with some soup. And if people come round as well, it just means then that I've got plenty of bread that we can serve with some homemade soup. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to slice this up and uh, we'll pop it in the freezer together. Right, so I've just been out of my workroom, found some bags, because the only size I've got was this size in the house. And I've just found two of these. These are the 25 litre ones, they're a decent size, they're handy for the freezer, handy for this job. So I'm just going to do the same. Same thing as what I've just done with the fruit cake. Pop a piece of paper in between. There we go. In theory, I'd get five in there, but I don't know if I get five in the bag. Oh, I will. So there's four in my little package. Grease proof paper is brilliant for everything. Um, I use it a lot. Might just put two more in this one. See if they'll fit. Might get three in there actually. So there's one. I've got seven pieces in there. So I'll go and get one of the smaller bags for the others. I always try to keep a good supply in the house. I've only got two left to go in, so. So that's them. Now the next thing I want to do is my soup. Right, so this is my broccoli and my Stilton soup here. Now it was quite thick in the pan, so what I've done is I've added some water to thin it out. Now what I'll do when I pop it back in the pan to heat it up next time, I can add some corn flour or some flour to thicken it again. Um, and it just means that it'll go a bit further um because it was only really one portion but now it's two um it'll be a really nice soup so i'll just add a little bit more water you don't want too much you don't want it to crystallize in the in the freezer and then be horrible when it comes out so i just want to make sure it's a good enough portion to make it worthwhile freezing so what i'm going to do is i'll show you what i'm going to use so that's ready get these tubs in the pound shop you get six I think for a pound um, and they're really good you can get the soup saver bags and they're like these bags but they're specifically for soup and then you can pop them in the microwave and they're thick enough not to melt in the microwave and you can heat your soup through so they're really handy um, but I'm using these because I love these little trays because they're stackable you pop the lid on the top that. You stack up one on top of the other in the freezer. You can write on them what they are and then as you change what it is you can uh, wipe the label off. But I know what this is so I'm not going to bother. Um, so what I'm going to do is pour it in. As you can see it's quite thin. You can't. quite a thin soup now, which is what I want. It pulls out the pan nicely now, which is good. So I've got my lid on. So that's roughly a portion.
that's two. So that saves that going to waste. I had two portions of it yesterday and I, I don't think I could stomach another one today. So, right, I'll just pop some water in this and then this is done. Now, the next one I've got is what I call my spicy, my red soup. Because this is my spicy red vegetable soup. It's a lovely soup. It's a really, really nice soup. Um, always goes down well when we have a church lunch. So, I'm just again, I'm going to thin it out, make it easier to get into the tubs. Um, hoping to get four out of this, two for today, and then the rest in the freezer. So again, I'm thinning it out. Now this is nice soup, this. I made it the other week on my video. Put a link in the little i button above the video. But it's a really nice soup. Put a lot of lentils in it, and it's great for the winter. So again, I'm just adding water. And then when it goes back in the pan again, I can add corn flour or flour to thicken it. That's that. Right, I'll just get some more tubs. So these are my tubs. Um, I'll probably get four out of this. Because there's so much in the pan, I'll ladle this one. But if this is enough, we'll have some for lunch today. So you can't see them, can you? This is a great way of building up your food storage, by the way. If um, you have leftovers, just put it in the freezer. And if you're making something, make an extra batch. Like if you're making a bolognese, make twice as much as you need for your portion and pop it in the freezer. And it's just a great way of building up a nice healthy food storage that um, you've made yourself. You know what's gone in it. You know your, fel your family are going to get a nice healthy meal. And uh, you also then can control the portion size. I mean, especially for me at the moment with the rapeseed oil, I have to be so careful. So at least this way, I know what's gone in it. And I have this supply of boxes. I keep, I buy them and then I keep them in here. Um... And then I can just pop the lids on. There's one. There's two. I think I need some new ones. All the lids have gone. Two. Three. So they're for the freezer. And then I've got one. One for today. One more box. This pan's far too big for heating it up, so I need to empty the pan. Well, it was just five portions. That's good, isn't it? Right. So two of those can go in the fridge, and for about ten minutes' work on my tray here, it just makes it easier for carrying if everything's together. Got my three bags of barabrith, the two bags of plums, and my bags of bread. So quite a bit to go in there for a few minutes' work. It didn't take me long. Move them out of the way, and then I can get my soup on properly. So just stacking it up. So I'm going to take this out to the freezer. And for that, I've got soup and bread and dessert. <laughs> so that's a good meal, that, for a few days. Hi, everyone decided to come out for a walk. It's a lovely evening. We've just had a hail shower. 
and uh, it's been quite a cold day today so I thought I'd come out for a walk. Do you want to see the neighbours? There's lots of them about tonight. Lots of sheep around and uh, yeah it's just starting to go a bit dark and it's a lovely time of day to be out. I've just had my tea, just had baked potato and veggie curry and it was lovely, really nice. So it's much better now I've got the wood stove back on because uh, I'm able to use the stove for the tea, so that's good. I'm just on my way down the woodland path and the way I walk to go to get the honey. And uh, I have got some videos coming. I've been working hard on getting some videos done, but uh, they're not edited yet. I've got some videos for the cook stove for you. There's a cottage pie recipe. Um, I think there's a lasagna recipe. There's cakes. Um, and I might try, sorry, I might try and do a winter vegetable soup. But uh, we'll have to see. Because I've got tomatoes coming through, finally, in the uh, greenhouse and the polytunnel. And, uh, yeah, I've got some butternut squash to use. I've got some parsnips to use. And I've got some peppers to use. So uh, that might be quite nice for a nice winter vegetable soup, which we had the other day when we went out for something to eat, and it was absolutely delicious. So, Ooh, feeling a bit puffed. Just had my tea. I'm very full, and uh, it's quite cold. So yeah, I hope you enjoy my video today, and. Uh, I will catch up with you again next week. the end of the day and the bats are out. I've had a lovely walk. As you can see it's nearly dark. So I'm on my way home. Hey Grace. <laughs> Good night. Good night.